live, so apparently <laughs> I'm standing around talking, but uh, it's so good to be here tonight, and we thank you for coming tonight uh, to the Lord's house on this Wednesday night. Wednesday nights are still dear to our hearts. We uh, just appreciate getting to come together and worship together, uh, both in song and in the word. Uh, tonight, our uh, musicians are not uh, here, they're, they're out of town for the evening, but uh, We've got a lot going on, so we're going to need to pray tonight. We want to pray for our middle schoolers and high schoolers that are at the youth building, and we want to pray for all those that are in Awana and our Awana workers uh, over here uh, up, upstairs in the church. Uh, so pray for them. That's another powerful, powerful program and ministry, putting the Word of God inside of kids' hearts. And so we are very thankful for all that, uh, that these workers do. Pray for Brent and Miss Amy and then all those that help her. I know she's got many, many that, that help her up there. But uh, we're excited about what God's doing at, Li doing at Liberty uh, and the things, just the good reports we've heard this week, the good things we've seen that the Lord is doing. And while we pray tonight, we also do have some very dear prayer requests that's on our hearts, some, some calls we've received uh, this evening, this afternoon. Uh, people just really needing prayer right now. So people need the Lord, and uh, they need the Lord to comfort them during these times. I know you've got burdens on your heart, and uh, for those of you joining us live on Liberty Live, we want to pray for you as well as we pray. So uh, I don't have to know your specific need. I just know that you have needs in your life, and the Lord knows those needs. And so we're going to pray for you, and we ask that uh, if you're watching from another uh, county, another state, uh, another part of the country that you would just pray for us, pray for the ministries at Liberty, uh, pray for the Spirit of the Lord to be here every time we meet. And so we thank you for joining us, and we want to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get right in the Word tonight. So let's go to Him in prayer right now, and praying for each other, praying for our nation, these many needs and burdens that's in our heart. Our Father in heaven, we, we just want to thank you today for loving us and for being so good to us, Lord. Father, uh, we don't deserve your goodness in our life. Lord, you have blessed us above what we ever deserve. We see your hand every day uh, operating in our lives, and we thank you for that. And Lord, tonight we do come thankful uh, before you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for saving us, for putting a desire in our heart to serve you and to please you. And, and Lord, just for, uh, for caring for us as you've cared for us, Lord, all through the years. Lord, we thank you for liberty, and Lord, not only those that are here tonight, but Father, we thank you for those that are watching through Liberty Live, that, that God, you would bless them tonight as they watch and join us in worship. But Lord, tonight we know that there's many hearts that are heavy, and I want to pray for, for each of those that have burdens tonight. I pray for those, Lord, who are, <clears throat> Lord, who are uh, weeping and who are sorrowful, Lord, who are uh, just walking through uh, deep, dark places tonight, I pray for them that, God, you would comfort them and lift them up, Father, I pray. Most of all, let them know that, Lord, wherever they go, that, Lord, you're with them, and, and God, may they sense your presence. And, Father, I pray for those that are sick. I pray, God, that you will bring healing to their bodies. I pray for those, Lord, waiting results from tests, Lord, that, God, you would, uh, Lord, just work a miracle there and let those results be favorable and let, let them be positive, Lord. Father, we pray for our nation, we pray for, uh, for COVID, uh, and Lord, those that work around it, we pray for all of our frontline workers that you'd protect and keep, and, and God, give them rest for weary bodies. I'm praying for our nation, Lord, politically, and, and just as a country, that God, uh, that your hand would move in this nation once again. Uh, and Father, we're thankful that, uh, that you are always on the throne, and that God, You've never been removed and you never will. And so, Lord, we have confidence in that truth that you're working all things together for good for those that love you. And so, Lord, let us be in your will and in your plan. God, use us in your service. And, Lord, we just want to thank you for what you're going to do here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you will, take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. John chapter 6. I want to go back and visit... Some things we read last Wednesday night, but we, uh, we didn't touch on and didn't cover. I really don't want to miss just a great powerful truth that is in the Gospel of John. <clears throat> and while you're turning there, it's just going to be a few verses. Uh, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. At least if you'll just pull those first verses up. All right. John chapter 6, we're going to look first at verse 
uh, 39. John chapter 6, verse 39, verse 40. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. Now this is Jesus. If you have a Bible with red letters uh, or you're reading uh, uh, your choice of Bible on your phone, uh, then it'll be, in, it'll be in red letters if that's the edition you have. But this is the Lord speaking. So he said, this is the Father's will which has sent me that of all which he hath given me, I shall lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Now, Jesus is not speaking of an it or a thing or an object, but he is speaking of, of uh, those that are his. He's speaking uh, to the church, if you will, in our time. So verse 40, and this is the will of him that has sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Next verse is verse 44. Look down at verse 44. We read all, we read all these verses last week, but I want to just bring in out a point here. So verse uh, 39, Jesus says, this is the Father's will, that every one that the Father has given me, that I will lose none of them. And in verse 40, he says, I'm going to raise them up. Those that believe in me and receive eternal life, I will raise them up in the last day. Verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at that last day. Just to hang on right there at least uh, on that verse. Let me say this about that verse. This is very, very important. So it's very simple. We've really seen just a great explanation of salvation here. The emphasis tonight, what I want you to look at is, is the last week we talked about the sustaining grace of God. Uh, and uh, tonight I want you to think about the keeping grace of God. Uh, and so that's what the Lord's pointing out here is that those the Lord gives me, I am going to keep. And I'm going to raise them up in the last day. I'm not going to lose any. Uh, Jesus already said. But we see a wonderful uh, description of the gospel. And so Jesus has already said that whoever, whoever sees me and believes in me, believes, how simple uh, salvation is. If we believe with our heart, whoever believes me will receive everlasting life or eternal life. And then Jesus here says that no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And for that individual who comes to Jesus because he's drawn by the Father, believes in Jesus, then they receive eternal life and everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And so this, is, this verse here I think is so key to, to the salvation that we have been given, <clears throat> this, this truth about being drawn by the Father. And I, I think that it was this verse I preached in October or uh, September, uh, maybe, uh, maybe July, August, uh, maybe September of 2018. It was this this one verse that led us to that one Sunday morning where uh, where twenty uh, around twenty people got saved that Sunday morning because it's this truth that I think even a lot of preachers miss today. But the fact of the matter is, is that to be saved and to come is, and to receive to believe in Him and to receive salvation to receive everlasting life, eternal life, you have to be drawn by the Father. Uh, and that's, that's, that, the Lord does that through conviction uh, in our lives. And so everybody here that's ever, that's ever been saved, or if you're watching on Liberty Live and you know that you know that you know that you've been saved by God's grace, then you also know there was a time in your life when God began drawing you. And He began drawing you. And I've seen it played out hundreds of times over uh, where somebody would, somebody would visit the church uh, and, and, and they would, then they would start coming and they would keep coming. And, and I would watch them during invitation time when invitation was given. Uh, and it's interesting to watch this play out among kids. Mom and dad, listen to this. Because among children, when they're at that age where they start understanding the need to be saved, it's so interesting. Almost without exception, when the Spirit of God is moving and the invitation is given for a salvation type appeal uh, or a salvation type message, uh, that, that child, as God's Spirit is moving, will always draw up to one parent or the other and start hugging on that parent and clinging to that parent. And, uh, and that's, that's a conviction upon the heart of that child. I've seen that play over and over, and it's so, it's so joyful to watch God drawing somebody to his son. 
Uh, it's miserable for the sinner because I've been there. And boy, I'm telling you, uh, at the time, uh, it wasn't pleasant and it was miserable as God began drawing me. And I began fighting that because I didn't want to be drawn. I wanted me and my life and the way I, I was living. But God began convicting me and he began drawing me to his son Jesus. And to watch that process unfold and to look back on it in my life, I'm thankful for it now and I'm joyful for it now. But this is the way salvation works. And that's why, uh, well, I'm telling you, I've seen some high-pressure evangelists before uh, who do anything uh, to inflate numbers. Uh, I've seen evangelists walk into gymnasiums to a bunch of teenagers and, uh, and give the most... Uh, I'm going to call it easy believism. Uh, give the most, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but give an, an evangelistic invitation that more or less is going to get every kid in the gymnasium to move to the floor so they can repeat a prayer. Uh, and, and, and some of these acts, I'm not saying God can't save in those settings, uh, but what I'm saying is some of these acts, kids have been drawn by the preacher, by the evangelist, uh, or by a story he's told, or whatever the case may be, or drawn by their friends as their friends went and as their friends come. And we talked about this the other Wednesday night. But the Bible is very clear that the Father draws people to His Son Jesus. It's with His Spirit that He convicts and He draws. And that drawing, that is what will make somebody hang on to a pew until their knuckles turn white. Literally, I've seen that happen. Uh, and, and that drawing... Because we resist, uh, uh, the natural man in us resists and fights against the drawing and the wooing of God's Spirit. Uh, and I've, I've seen people run out of church before under such great conviction. My grandpa, he was saved when he was about 12 years old. And I could take you to the church he was saved in. It's still, uh, it may still be open in operation today. Uh, but when you drive by today, uh, you're going to be looking at the back of the church as you drive by. And I pointed out up on a hilltop. Uh, but that used to be the front of the church. And I didn't know this until my grandpa had told me, but at 12 years old, wearing a pair of overalls and barefooted. That would have been 1933. 1933. He went to a revival meeting in that church. And the preacher stood up. And Roger, which was really odd back in those days, because preachers just didn't preach out of Revelation back then in, in that time period. Uh, and, uh, but the preacher preached on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And my papa said he preached that with such hellfire that he said he could hear the sound of the hoof beats uh, in his ears. And he got under conviction that night, and it scared him so bad that he ran out the door of that church, and the church is up on a big, big hill. Uh, it's up in the mountains, of course. But uh, he said that when you come off the front of that church, that there was an old pig trail that that went around this way, and then you hit a little switch back in the trail. It turned back, and, and it went down the mountain that way. And, uh, of course, just threw that switch back is straight off the mountain and down a briar patch. Well, he was under such conviction that night that he took off out of the church and he run down that little pig trail. And where the curve was, he missed the curve and run plumb off in a briar patch that night uh, trying to get away uh, from the Lord in conviction because God was drawing him. Now, thank God by God's grace that he, for some reason, he went back the next night. And the next night is, is when he got saved. And what a joyful time that was. But... This is the plan of salvation as God has, has designed it, that he draws you to himself. Because see, getting saved, it's not our ideal. Uh, it's, it's not our plan and it's not our thought and we don't initiate it. We've got to understand that. Uh, that somewhere in your past, if you've ever been saved by God's grace, it wasn't your ideal, but God initiated it. And he began drawing you and convicting you and showing you the need to be saved. So I just wanted to stop right there just a minute to point out that we have seen a, a more clear description of the gospel than, than, than there is in any other parts of the Bible. Because Jesus says, look, the Father draws you, and you see me, the Son, and you believe in me, and I give you everlasting life. And so it's very simple, but the Father draws. So I don't know, maybe you're here tonight, or maybe you're watching on Facebook Live, and, and uh, you just don't ever remember a time in your life where you were really drawn to Jesus by the Father, uh, and, and that's the way to be saved. It's the only way to be saved. So no man can come to me, Jesus said, no man, unless the Father draws you. Uh, and, and so Jesus here again, so let's move on, but he makes this statement again, and I will raise him up at the last day. I think there's one more verse, Elise. Verse 54, 
Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Now Jesus is speaking figuratively here. Uh, he, he doesn't mean literally, but he's speaking figuratively. And he says this, uh, and what he's speaking of is, is he who believes in me and takes me as who I am, Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. He has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Now watch this. I'm think, we're thinking tonight, and this may just be more of a devotional because I'm going to be very brief tonight, but uh, we're thinking tonight about the keeping grace of God. Uh, and we see that Jesus starts off these verses I showed you by saying that, that, uh, that I'm here to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is this. The will of the Father is that I keep all that he has given me. And in the last day, I'm going to raise him up. Now watch, this, this may not seem too big to you, but hang on, just watch. Uh, and so we see this thought again in Scripture many times over. We see it in the book of Jude, uh, where Jude, he is speaking of contending for the faith. And man, I, I mean, uh, Jude is, uh, he, he's just a few verses, uh, and the verses that he writes is very, very powerful. And he opens up and he just bashes these, uh, these uh, false believers that have slipped into the church. And I mean, he, he's not kind, he's not politically correct, and you would not vote him in as pastor because he shoots so straight. Uh, and he bashes unbelievers that have slipped into the church. And, but then he speaks to, the, to believers and he's encouraging them, contend for the faith. Don't quit, don't give up, but persevere because... Jesus is able to keep you from falling. That's a very powerful statement. Now what he's not talking about, he's not talking about that Jesus is able to keep you sinless because we know in this mortal body we're not going to remain sinless. In fact, we know we're, just, we're, uh, we're sinful even as a saved individual. That we were once lost sinners uh, and now we are just believing sinners. We're sinners who have been saved by God's grace. So Jude is not talking about the Lord is able to keep us perfect or keep us from stumbling in sin or from sinning. Uh, that's not what Jude's talking about, but what he's talking about is contending for the faith, persevering, pressing on. And so Jude must have known, and he indeed did know, uh, all of the troubles we see in churches today are the same troubles that Paul dealt with in 1 Corinthians. The same troubles that Jude was dealing with. The same things that Peter dealt with as he, as he led God's church. And so Jude knew that for believers who are running the race, um, that there would be things that would come be, that would come along that would cause you to want to quit. That would cause you to want to sit down that would cause you to want to give up at times, uh, that would cause you to want to just fly, fly up a white flag of surrender and say, I'm done. See, Jude knew this. And so he's encouraging the saints, press on, persevere, keep going, and know that we serve a God and we have a Savior who's able to keep you from, from falling out of the race and from stumbling. And so this is what the Lord's wanting us to know here is that I'm going to keep everyone that has come to me uh, and I can enable you to persevere, to stick with it when it's tough, to keep going when you don't want to go, uh, to keep your head up when you want your head down. And in the last day, I will raise every single one of those that are mine up in resurrection uh, and in power. And so uh, the Lord is wanting us to know here that that which he started in us, he will finish. He's not going to quit on us. He's not going to vacate on us. Uh, he's not going to uh, let us be weak where we cannot finish the race that he started in us, but that he is going to give us keeping grace, if you will. He's going to give us grace that will keep our feet firm, uh, our stance steady, uh, and that we may run the race, not quit, and not give up. I, when I went through rookie school, I, I just I hadn't I just been out of the army uh, for about uh, two or three months, maybe, and and during that time I was still uh, just doing I called it PT then, uh, doing the physical training every morning, 
uh, and so I was staying in shape. And we got into rookie school, and we had physical exercise during uh, rookie school. But then we had to go through, uh, we had an obstacle course that you had to pass. And uh, for me, it was, it was really nothing because I was in good shape. But for some of those guys, they had not been in the military, nor were they in shape. So they really, really struggled uh, with uh, the obstacle course. And a, a, and a man, uh, I was in this class with a young man who become a great friend of mine later on. Uh, but he was a big boy, and I mean, I don't just, I don't mean muscular big either. I mean, he was just big, period. Like, he was tall, he was very heavy, uh, and, uh, you know, a little bit round. Uh, but his, uh, we, 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 his nickname uh, become uh, Little Rock, because we already had a big rock, and so uh, we couldn't call him Rock, because we already had a big rock, so we called him Little Rock. Uh, well, Little Rock, we could get him through most of the obstacle course with pushing and prodding. Uh, and, uh, but there was a six-foot wall that you had to jump. No, no steps, no ladders, none of that, just a straight six-foot wall. or Maybe it wasn't six foot, maybe it was eight foot because you had to jump and grab the top of it and get across. So I guess it was an eight-foot wall. And so you had to get across this eight-foot wall. And, uh, and all through the class, that wall got rocked every time. He could not make it. You don't make the wall, you don't get certified as a law enforcement officer in the state of North Carolina, along with the, along with the written test that you have to take. Uh, and, so, and so we had it all planned out, how that at, on the test day, at the end of uh, those several months training, that, that we were going to get rocked through. And so the plan was, was to stay with him and stay beside him and, and, and to keep him going. And so, uh, and I, I knew that I was going to get through first. That's the way it had played out through all through the, the, the school. Uh, and so my plan was, was to zip through first. Uh, and uh, when I finished and crossed that wall, and I was going to turn around and come back where those who didn't have better times were helping Rock along the way. They were keeping him up and pushing him and, and getting him through each obstacle one at a time. And then when we come to the wall, I was going to help just get him over the wall, and so that's what the plan was, and so I, I finished. I run around to where those that were slower were helping him, pushing him along the way, and I jumped in and took over where I could push him and push him, and we got to the wall, and we did what we did uh, to have to do to get him over that wall, so he finished uh, the race, and boy, I want to tell you, at the end of that, uh, I was beat, I was exhausted, and all these other guys were beat, and they were exhausted too, uh, and we were just trying to catch our breath, but at the end of the day, he made it. Well, I want to tell you something, church. Listen to me. When Jesus says, I'll keep you, I'm going to keep you, I, I want you to understand that, that he's not going to be out of breath when this thing's over. It's not going to strain him. It's not going to make him weak to keep us up and to keep us going. Uh, but, but he is an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God, uh, and he is able in so many ways uh, but the Bible's very clear. He's able to keep us from falling. And he's able that all the Father has given him, which is you and I, believers in Jesus Christ, he's able to keep every one of us until the last day. And he's going to do that. He that started a good work in you, he's going to finish it until the last day, until the day of Jesus Christ. So God's not going to give up. God's not going to quit on you. He's not going to back up. He's not going to go weak and weary trying to push you across the finish line. But he's very well and able to keep you through whatever it would be that would make you want to slow down, that would make you want to quit, that would make you want to give up, that would make you want to throw in the towel, uh, that would make you want to just walk away. Now, let's be very honest here. And I realize I'm very much flesh. I'm, I'm saved by God's grace, but I'm made of flesh and blood. And maybe I'm weaker than a lot of you. Uh, and I hope you're a lot stronger than I am. I really do. But I'll tell you this. Uh, there's been times in my life, uh, in my walk with the Lord, let me say that. There's been times in my walk with the Lord where I've wanted to quit. Where I've wanted to give up. Uh, where I've wanted to lay it down, where I've wanted to walk away. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you, I've entertained the thoughts before of just going back like I used to be. Now, you can call that an abomination. You can say, I can't believe that. You can say, oh me or oh my. And you cannot be my friend anymore, but I'm just being very real and very honest to you. But I never have quit 
walked away, turned back, whatever you want to call it. Not because it wasn't thoughts in my mind, but because of a Savior who's able to keep me from falling. He's able to help me persevere. He's able to, to, uh, to strengthen me to press on, uh, to stay in the race, to not lay it down, uh, but to go and to go and to go. Even when I think I can't go anymore, He gives this keeping grace where He keeps me in the race. And so some of you here know very well what it's like to want to quit. You know what it, very well what it's like to want to give up, to throw in the towel, to want to slow down. Uh, to want to wanna back up. I remember a preacher friend of mine one time making this statement. He said, uh, he said I, I come to a place in my ministry where I thought I was just going to kind of take a break for a while. And he said, I found out that I, I really never could take a break. He said that every time I think about quitting, he said God would give me keeping grace to keep me going and to keep me pressing on and to keep me further. And I want you to know this, that if you're one of his... If you've ever been in the race, then you need to know that quitting may be on your mind. Giving up may be on your mind. Slowing down, backing up, taking a break, whatever you want to call it. Circumstances of life may have brought you to those kind of thoughts. But there's a God who has this special kind of grace that he gives to you and I. And for lack of better terms, I just call it keeping grace. Because that's what Jesus has said. All the Father has given me, I'm going to keep. And I'm not just going to keep them for a few days, few months, few years, but I will keep until the last day when I raise them up. And so be encouraged. If you're watching on Facebook Live and you're joining us from another, another county, another state, another country, be encouraged to know that no matter how low you are right now, no matter how low you may have been yesterday, no matter what your thoughts are of, of resigning or taking a break or giving up or quitting, be encouraged to know that, that the Lord's got keeping grace for you. He'll, he'll keep you in the race and He'll strengthen you with grace to allow you to persevere, to press on, to keep going. And chances are that when He gives you that grace, you'll find that you'll reach further than you ever have before in your own strength. You need His strength to do that. This is so, this is so pointed out, and I'll, I'll be finished, in the book of Revelation I mentioned this when we preached through that book uh, about a year ago or so, a year and a half ago, but I'll mention it again. In Revelation chapter 7, the Lord speaks of 144,000. Now, we've, we've talked about that. We explained who they are. They are uh, Jewish evangelists. They're preachers that are called, or evangelists, whatever you want to say, that are called, or witnesses that are called from the Jewish nation during the time of tribulation. You and I are not here. Uh, we're with the Lord. Uh, we've been called up in the rapture. Uh, but he calls out from the children of Israel 144,000 evangelists. And these 144,000, they're going to go out and they're going to preach the gospel and they're going to tell the good news of Jesus. And there's going to be a multitude that are going to be saved. We saw that in the book of Revelation, that, that no man can number. Just a great multitude will be saved during the tribulation. Of course, it'll cost you your life to be saved. You'll be martyred more than likely for your faith. Uh, but uh, the 144,000. Now, what happens is, is that uh, the Antichrist and his militia and his police, his military, uh, they end up killing these 144. They hunt them down and kill these 144,000 evangelists. Fast forward to Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14, it is a picture of, it's a scene that's taking place in heaven. Remember the book of Revelation is, a, is kind of a back and forth movie. We see a scene in heaven, a scene on earth. A scene in heaven, a scene on earth. And so Revelation 14, it's a scene in heaven. And in Revelation 14, I noticed one day studying that in Revelation 14 that there was 144,000 souls there before the Lord. And I said, wait a minute, let, let me go back to Revelation 7. The Lord called 144,000 Jewish evangelists to preach the word. And then in Revelation 14, they've been martyred for their testimony of God's word. They've been slain for their testimony of Jesus. And there's 144,000 souls there before the Lord. 
And so I couldn't help but to notice the same number. Just stay with me. This is simple math, I know, but in North Carolina, you know, you need more than uh, nine fingers and toes to count and do math. Uh, so in Revelation 14, it wasn't a hun- it wasn't uh, a hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. It wasn't a hundred and uh, it wasn't a hundred forty three thousand and nine hundred. Uh, it wasn't a hundred and forty two thousand. It wasn't 140,000, but in Revelation 7, it's 144,000, and all the way over in in Revelation 14, there's 144, the exact same number. Every single one of the ones he called in Revelation 7, he kept. Through all of the hell that was being rained down on earth, through all of the the plagues and all of the judgments that was being rained down uh, during the tribulation period, uh, through all of the uh, through all of the the, uh, the thing of being hunted down and of being uh, murdered and being slaughtered because of their testimony for Jesus, of all of that, there around the throne of God is one hundred and forty four thousand. The Lord kept every single one. So let me ask you something: You've been saved by God's grace. You have been marvelously and miraculously saved by the grace of God. Now tell me this, if God's going to go out of His way to draw you, He didn't have to, but He did. If He's going to go out of His way to draw you, to bring you to His Son Jesus who suffered and died for you and rose again for you, if He's going to draw you and bring you to Jesus and then give you the gift of belief, Give you, uh, give you grace to help you confess Jesus as Lord, to give you grace uh, to repent of your sins, to give you the gift of faith, to believe in Jesus with a, just out of your, the depths of your heart. If God's going to do, and then He's going to save you and seal you and make you His and, and give you a promise and give you a purpose and give you a plan, if God's going to do all that, then why would God not raise you up when you get low? Lift your head when it gets down. Uh, pick you up, dust you off when you're ready to sit down and quit. When you're ready to throw up the white flag, listen, he's going to come in and he's going to let his spirit breathe on you and encourage you and, and, and to put a fire again back inside of your soul. See, if you've ever been saved, you know what it's like to have a fire in your soul. If you've ever served him, you know what it's like. Uh, to serve Him, not for recognition, not for promotion, uh, not to be uh, mentioned in, in popular circles, but you serve Him just because you just love Jesus. If you've ever done any of that, then you're going to know what it's like to have God's Spirit to breathe into you. Just new life. Uh, revival winds, if you will. Revival fires to lift you up and encourage you to persevere, to keep going, don't quit, don't stop, to push you across the finish line. And one day, as these scriptures have promised us, all that God has given him, Jesus, his son, Jesus is going to keep, he's going to raise us up in the last day. So if you're watching Liberty Live on Facebook, or you're going to be tuning in and watching us on our website or on YouTube or whatever the case may be in later days, I just want you to know that he gives persevering grace, keeping grace to encourage you not to get down and don't get out. See, that's what a believer does. He may get down, but he can't get out because of what Jesus has done for him and is doing in him. And sometimes I think we get, I think sometimes we, we're ready to quit, we're ready to give up, we're ready to throw in the towel. We don't want no part of it anymore. We're kind of just done. We've done our share, we've done our part. And, And it's just tough, and so we're going to quit. I think sometimes we're at that place, but we just keep going, and we don't even know why. Well, it's because of keeping grace. Because he won't let us quit, lay down, give up, walk away, or back out. But when we get low, I'm glad that he's high. He's high and lifted up and holy on his throne. So be encouraged by the word, saints. Be encouraged, Facebook, if you're watching us tonight. You have a Savior who loves you and who will strengthen you, who will keep you from falling and enable you to persevere and to press on 
even through life's most difficult challenges, he gives grace. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we, uh, Lord, we thank you for the word because, Lord, even tonight we know of situations and of people who it'd be so easy tonight for them to quit, to want to give up, to throw in the towel. But yet, Lord, day by day, I see them still working for you, still preaching for you, still going for you, still playing, singing for you, still loving and caring for those around them, all for you. And Lord, I thank you for the grace that enables believers in our most difficult seasons when, we, when we're ready to quit, when we need a break, when we want to back up, when we want to give up, I'm thankful for grace that just picks us up and pushes us on and pushes us and pushes us. And when we start to get weak, strengthens us and lifts us up and pushes us again until one day we'll cross that finish line. And Lord, we'll be able to look back and see that it was you, that it was you who kept us in the race. Not our own strength, not our own will, not our own passion, not our own uh, abilities. But God, it's been you who's kept us in the race. We acknowledge that, we worship you, and we praise you. And Lord, for the one that's watching tonight or the one that's here, who Lord, maybe their head's been hung down, maybe, they're, uh, maybe Lord, they're slowing down, maybe they're backing up, maybe they want to quit. Lord, I just pray for them tonight that in a way that only you can do with your spirit, I pray tonight that you'll give them a nudge deep down inside their soul. That'll just lift them up. That'll get them back on their feet. That'll dust themselves off. And that, Lord, they'll take another step for you. And that step will turn into another mile. And that mile will turn into another race. And, Lord, they'll just keep running. All for your glory and all for your praise. So bless those that are yours. And Lord, thank you for keeping us. That you didn't just save us and leave us on our own and leave us by ourselves. But Lord, you saved us and you've ever been with us and you've ever kept us from falling. We thank you for that. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up, tell somebody about the Lord and what he's doing at Liberty and bring somebody to church with you on Sunday morning. We love each of you and thank you for joining us on Liberty Live tonight. We love each and every one of you. Have a good night.